What is up heisters, Noli here and welcome to another Payday 2 video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the GL40 grenade launcher and the ding dong breaching tool melee weapon. These are my first impressions, this is my second ever heist using them. The first heist I actually recorded did live commentary on and I decided to spare you that awful video because it was more keyboard than it was sound. Um, that's all you could hear, unfortunately. Uh, my voice was drowned out. My uh, the game sound was drowned out, but it was it was a nuisance to listen to, and so I decided I'd rather concentrate on getting those ding dong headshots, and uh, would do post commentary on this video. So I think both the gameplay improved, and hopefully, so will the commentary. So, the GL40 grenade launcher was added in the Gage Assault Pack, as was the Ding Dong, and this was added on Thursday. It's, it's Friday as I record this, but I don't know whether this will be uploaded on Friday. Um, but, this, this weapon is unique, and I can only imagine it's about 50% of the reason why you would want to buy this DLC, and uh, rightly so, it's an excellent weapon. So just to uh, throw aside any doubts anyone might have about a grenade launcher coming back into Payday 2, the game has evolved since they were viable. Um, no, it, it's really actually quite good and exceptionally well balanced. Um, I feel like Overkill has outdone themselves in this one simply because they've paid a lot of attention to what they were doing with it. Um, it it's not overpowered and it's not underpowered and it's so difficult to get explosives right um, and I think they did a damn fine job so let's take a look first of all at the map we're doing we are, we are heisting on rats very hard now the reason for that is this this weapons really strong I found and I guessed it would be in tight corridors and on courtyards it was not very good I imagine on open terrain. The reason for that is the splash damage on this weapon really isn't that damaging, especially with the build I have. It's got ultra shielded and you seldom end up hit taking damage to your health. However, the courtyards are just as good to fire into because often, especially in rats, there is first of all a raised view so you get the vantage point and can drop down. These explosives work really well from above because you can perfectly land the splash and you don't notice the drop off the same. And also, if you aim at some debris, the splash damage will often take out enemies. Just quickly, because it's relevant, they're very good at taking out bulldozers of the GL40. Um, is the GL40, I should say. I don't know why I uh, decided to pluralize the grenade launcher, but all you have to do is shoot them once, you will take their armor off and you will very easily be able to swap to your secondary, in this case it is the locomotive, which by the way is my secondary of choice so far with this weapon, I think it's really strong and works perfectly, again two take out bulldozers, two take out cloakers, who can be a little peskier for the GL40 to deal with. Let's actually take a look at this weapon's skills. Um, not skills, stats I should say. It's got a decent amount of damage, uh, probably around about what you'd expect from a grenade launcher. It's 340. It will take out most enemies on very hard, for example, bar cloakers and again bulldozers, but you wouldn't expect it to, and they essentially take out bulldozers in one shot because then you quickly swap to your secondary. Um, 340 is not good enough, however, to one-shot Cloakers. Cloakers have 600 health on very hard and become a real pain to deal with because the reload time is extensive. Three seconds is long, especially when this thing has one round in a clip. So it's just one pill and you have to reload again. It's what you'd expect from a thumper light -like grenade launcher, but um, it, it definitely makes it a lot weaker than it would be if it just had two, for example. Um... If it was a two second long respawn, this weapon would be too strong though. Uh, but but it can create issues and it's the reason why my build is so tanky. If you get find yourself caught out, unable to reload in a situation, you need that tankiness to sponge up bullets before you can get out another pill. Otherwise, um, your only other option is to get out the way and take cover. But of course you can't reload while running out the way and 
it creates problems in that sense. So I preferred standing my ground, tanking shots, and reloading, and it was relatively effective, and it, it sort of count, counted these three second long reload time. Again, it struggles with cloakers though, because it doesn't matter how much tankiness you've got if you're one shot by them. So again, keep your distance with cloakers and be prepared to swap out to your secondary. Shotguns are great because they are just very powerful against cloakers. Now, one, one of the things I forgot to mention as far as damage is concerned is it's very difficult to get powerful multipliers on it. Bullet Storm is a skill in the Enforcer Tree, I believe, and it is the skill that I was most excited to use with grenade launchers. I thought it could be absolutely ridiculous. I didn't imagine this thing was going to have a large clip size. I didn't think it would be more than one. And so I was thinking, with Bullet Storm, uh, the way the skill works is you have 10 seconds of firing without having to reload uh, or without losing ammo. You're basically going to be firing a fully automatic grenade launcher. If any of you have ever played a mod on Team Fortress 2 called TF2 times 10, you'll understand vaguely what I mean by a fully automatic grenade launcher. And I had a feeling that Overkill might have missed a trick on that one and it would come out unpatched. We would be able to spam out grenades all day. I would have made a video on it. It would have been great. It would have been patched and everyone would have been sad. Instead, Overkill were really on the ball. And I'd like to say on the whole with this DLC, they've been really good with their balancing. Sometimes things come out too weak and they need a buff. But I, I, I honestly think the GL40 is in a good place right now. Um, as disappointed as I was that Bulletstorm does not work with grenade launchers, it was really, it was a good heads up decision by the Overkill team. Also, Overkill, um, the, the skill this time doesn't work with it because they don't want ridiculous damage multiplications happening. Um, so you're one shotting bulldozers. But you know, you're essentially already one shotting them. It doesn't really matter that much. Now, the Ding Dong. Um, I believe I've covered everything I wanted to. No, I haven't. That's not true. Let's leave the ding dong for now. I know you guys are excited, but um, let's instead have a look at the ammo capacity. I've already said that this thing isn't too awful as far as ammo is concerned, but it actually has six rounds in um, its entire set of ammo, um, and then it gets an extra two, I believe this is the case from Mag Plus. Normally Mag Plus would give five and ten, but it seems to me it gives one each for acing it and getting level one. You might just want to pick up level one on this skill. You might not want to pick up any. I have it aced. It doesn't make a huge difference. I would probably advise going for, in my case, some extra sentry gun skills. But the, the ammo capacity is not really a problem. It, as I said, it only carries eight at a time. But... As long as you have, and I believe this is only as long as you have the um, fully loaded skill, it picks up um, half a shot per ammo pack. What I mean by that is the ammo dropped by enemies killed. Most of the time with this weapon, you are going to be killing more than one enemy. And if you're running a strong secondary and you have decent melee build into your build, you can definitely take out kills without having to shoot a single round of this and maintain your ammo perfectly well. On top of that, you can pick up ammo bags as an asset or you can bring it with you. You can even put those points that you didn't put into Mag Plus into a second ammo bag and more ammunition. But I didn't even find that was necessary. All I did was pick up the ammo bag and I only have to use it once on this mission, pick up the asset for it and um, just relied on Fully Loaded to carry me. So, really not too much of an ammo issue. Now, I'm going to take a look at the Ding Dong in just a second. One last thing, as I launch an enemy on top of the roof, uh, the ragdoll physics are excellent. Because the, um, the projectile is propelled so much faster than the grenade, the ragdoll is even stronger. Um, but what is the main competition with this weapon? Because it's kind of unique. Well, the only thing I can really think of is the frag rounds on the shotgun. Um, but let's think about just exactly how much more hampered the frag rounds on shotguns are. First of all, they don't do the same amount of damage. The one thing they are better at, in my opinion, is stun locking. Stun locking works well on some armored enemies. It stops them from ever 
hitting you as they're falling around all over the place and it can help your teammate pick up kills or you just swap to a secondary and take them out but their lethality is not very strong Le -le lethal. I pretend like that's a word I was close but in the middle of a commentary it's sometimes it's just hard to think of the exact word you want um, there you see me picking up ammo for the first time just quickly to mention again segueing off the um, the sentry gun was the my, my equipment of choice and it was really powerful then because I've always said with melee or with explosive or anything like that you want distractions Joker's excellent with melee because you're never gonna kill your jokered enemy but with explosives it's a slightly different story splash damage is gonna result in you slowly whittling down your new found ally once enemy and uh, you'll end up probably killing him by accident so that's a problem and that's why I chose sentry gun instead I, I felt like it was a better tanky option in that case and uh, enemies tend to group up around them if you place them down not only are they doing good damage on their own you can fire a quick pill into the group and get six kills in one. There is an achievement for getting four kills in one, by the way, that will unlock you one of the new masks. And uh, it was one I failed to mention was actually relatively easy to unlock. So half the masks aren't too hard to get. The other half are a little bit tedious, if you ask me. Okay, so the ding dong. Fully charged, this thing is a knockdown machine. Unfortunately, it takes a very long time to charge and it, its overall swings feel a little bit labored. However, it's got good knockdown and high damage. It's, it's the first of the knockdown weapons to really have the damage option. I suppose you could say you had the shovel, but that really didn't do enough damage on anything above normal to be viable. Whereas this thing is really holding its own on the very hard difficulties and probably will thanks to that knockdown moving all the way up to Death Wish. I'll get back to difficulties and where I think these weapons are going to be effective in just a minute. Um, but overall the ding dong is not the best melee weapon uh, you're probably better going for either dedicated damage with the hatchet or dedicated knockdown with the uh, police baton but it's definitely a lot of fun and once the Huxford guys get those ragdoll physics and head explosions with it probably best a weapon in game <laughs> depending on your maturity levels if you're about as mature as I am um, so, the, the effectiveness of these weapons, as always, depends on the difficulty. Taking a look uh, at a previous example, the Thanatos. The thing about the Thanatos is it was exceptionally strong on Death Wish, but relatively wasteful, I suppose, on normal, hard, very hard, probably even up to overkill. It's a waste. You're better bringing the Rattlesnake on the whole. Because bulldozers are few and far between and they're just not as hard to take out. However, on Death Wish, the Thanatos really is unique in that you kind of need a teammate to be carrying it to make the missions more doable. I imagine the same thing is going to be the case uh, to a lesser extent with the GL40. Don't get me wrong, it's actually quite strong on lower difficulties because the ammo capacity isn't a problem the same way as it is with the sniper rifles. And you can afford to be close range with this thing, as I've said, if you have a tanky build with skills like Bulletproof. Um, but the, the issue is it's wasteful damage, in my opinion. You don't need it. You can have an assault rifle that takes them out in one shot to the head, or you can fire a pill and maybe get one shot but only have seven more to fire after that. I think that's false economy and would not advise it, despite the relatively decent ammo capacity. The reload time lets it down on difficulties like normal, hard, and very hard. This thing starts shining in overkill. Now, I know this is on very hard, but it is wrapped. It does get very hectic, and so the GL40 was more effective here. But on overkill and death wish, this thing is, a, as I've already said, really good at taking out um, bulldozers. It's still going to one-shot most of the standard enemies, and at the very least, it's going to daze and stun. The same way the uh, frag rounds do on shotguns, but it's going to get more kills. And um, strangely enough, it's actually more efficient in ammunition, in my opinion, um, if you play it right, that is. If you're careful about placing your shots, trying to kill more than one enemy with each shot. So, this thing is definitely a 
leaning towards Death Wish weapon. Um, but like I said, it, it, it's a lot of fun, and uh, with the Ragdoll physics it currently has, you're definitely going to enjoy it. And again, once the Hoxhead team has had a little bit of time prettying up some of the effects on it, it's going to be hugely effective. Do keep in mind, Cloakers are really strong against the weapon. You're going to struggle to take them out, and you definitely want a decent secondary that's going to carry you through otherwise. On the whole, I would definitely give this thing a 9 out of 10. Um, but as I've said, I will get around to more fully explaining this because it's 50% of your DLC purchase. When I do a DLC review over the next couple of days, um, I'm going to more fully go into detail about why I rate this weapon as I do and, and why I think it's a, a reasonable reason to pick up the DLC. And that is obviously once I've had more time with the other weapons. I've really mainly been messing around with this and uh, some of the melee weapons actually because you know that's where I'm most interested. Now just to move away from the gameplay um, for a couple of announcements. Tomorrow I'm going to be finally getting my new internet fiber optic. I'm going to be able to stream. It's going to be such a weight off my shoulders. I am going to be doing an exciting, in fact, I think I might, this might be nearing, nearing the end of the video as I get taken out here. I'm going to be doing a hopefully exciting achievement stream. Um, it's going to be lasting a few hours as I try and pick up the remaining achievements I need for this DLC alongside you guys. And finally, I am hoping to announce the winner of the Gage Shotgun Pack DLC on Monday. That's for watching guys. See you all in the next one.